The Health Physics Society is one of the largest radiation protection societies in the world. The Society's mission is to support its members in the practice of their profession and to promote excellence in the science and practice of radiation safety. I'm Dr. John Cartarelli, President of the Health Physics Society. The international community is embarking on a review of an entire system of radiation protection. The Health Physics Society is contributing to this effort by providing a series of videos that describe the historical foundations of the current protection philosophy based on a linear no-threshold theory for cancer risk assessment, also known as LNT. We also participate in the process through our membership within the International Radiation Protection Association. A detailed history of how the LNT protection philosophy developed has been published in numerous peer-reviewed scientific journals by Dr. Edward Calabrese from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. He has researched extensively in the area of host factors affecting susceptibility to pollutants and is the author of over a thousand papers in scholarly journals as well as more than 10 books. Dr. Calabrese was awarded the 2009 Marie Curie Prize for his body of work on hormesis. To bring this history to the public and the international community, Dr. Calabrese was interviewed by Barbara Hamrick, a certified health physicist, attorney, and past president of the Health Physics Society. We are a scientific organization and as such seek truth and transparency on how science may or may not be incorporated in today's radiation protection standards, guidelines, and government policies. These videos are offered to the world in a transparent pursuit of truth and to garner trust among those who view them. As is offered with the scientific peer review process, viewers are encouraged to send comments or suggested corrections to factcheck at hps.org and be sure to include your sources so that we may correct the record if necessary. If any changes are made, they will appear at the end of this episode. In our first episode, you will get to know Dr. Calabrese and how he entered the field of toxicology and risk assessment. We are glad you are joining us on this historic journey. Hello, I'm Barbara Hamrick, past president of the Health Physics Society. I'm here today with Dr. Edward Calabrese, professor of toxicology at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. And he's going to talk to us about the historical underpinnings of the linear no threshold dose response model. Dr. Calabrese, would you like to begin to tell us how that came into being? Uh, yes, thanks very much, Barbara. For me, I've been a, a faculty member at UMass since 1976, a long time. And while there, I teach uh, toxicology and risk assessment. And I've written um, a goodly number of books on the topic. And um, in the, uh, the linear non-threshold dose response has been a central component to my teaching and to my books. And I would have to say that uh, when I got acculturated to the field back in the 1970s as a, a graduate student and then took on the professorial role and, and writing books on, on my area, uh, I, I'd have to say that, that I was a very strong uh, immediate supporter of the, uh, the linear non-threshold dose response. And I, I was in, in, in some respects, preconditioned you know, to that perspective by the people that I worked with and, and became affiliated with. It, it probably isn't known by maybe anybody except me that my um, uh, first uh, brief job for about six months after I got my PhD, uh, I worked for um, the, the Ralph Nader uh, Mass Public Interest Research Group, uh, focusing on environmental pollution and looking at, at that point, it was just coming after the U.S. Congress had passed the, the uh, Clean Water Act, which was uh, in 1972, I believe. And so my orientation towards, towards the environment started with really environmental activism. And I was a scientist in this mass purg office. And then I had the, the pleasure of meeting Ralph Nader, but unfortunately, Dr. Nader, um, uh, Attorney Nader, he uh, came by and said, that the office would be better served by another lawyer rather than a scientist. And so my position was terminated <laughs> within that framework. But I was fortunate to get a position uh, at the University of Illinois as an assistant professor in an occupational and environmental 
um, health sciences department. And my, um, my boss, uh, the one whose the briefcase more or less I carried around for a number of years, was a very strong um, physician who had uh, strong opinions when it came to um, risk assessment and cancer risk assessment. And he was very anti-industry. And he was involved with many litigations during this time period and after that time period. And, and I kind of grew up within, within a culture that was, was very environmentally um, active and oriented. And when I left the University of Illinois to come to, um, to, come to the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, um, you might not believe this, but the person who took over my office at Illinois was uh, the well-known uh, geneticist, environmental geneticist, uh, uh, Samuel Epstein. And Sam Epstein was a British origin. He was a very flamboyant sort of a, a personality who was uh, uh, very strident in his perspectives on, on uh, the environment and was very anti-industry within, within his uh, perspective. And so <clears throat> while I didn't have the ideological frameworks of, of the people who hired me, it's the culture that I grew up in. And, and, and it framed my, my initial thinking when I went to the University of Massachusetts. And all this plays into the, into the LNT story because uh, I then got into, um, you know, young, active, eager professor, um, assistant professor, <laughs> trying to move up the ranks. And, and over the course of the next um, you know, 10 or 12 years, I was uh, writing many grant proposals and fortunate it was the environmental revolution and I hit the right part of the wave and got many grants funded and, and was successful in terms of uh, promotion to associate and full professor. And at the same time, I was writing uh, almost a book every year. So I, was, I had my lab going, books, book writing, and, and I, was, I was really uh, into um, the, uh, the profession, put it that way. And if you go back and you look at my books, you'll find that there was always a section on LNT. And LNT for our audience is the linear no threshold model. That's right. And it's the model that was used or is used today and was used back in the day uh, to try to estimate uh, cancer risks at low doses uh, to exposures from um, ionizing radiation uh, as well as chemical carcinogens. And uh, in the, the, the belief system at the time that, that I grew up in was that there was really no safe level of exposure to a carcinogen, whether it was chemical or ionizing radiation, it was it was really a uh, a straight line drawn to to zero, and to, to the origin of, of the uh, the graph that you were looking at, and and there was no escape, and so um, in my classes I I taught um, I taught that, and it was it had become during that time period the 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 belief system and and regulatory um, um, position. Of, of agencies uh, such as the US EPA. And it's still the regulatory position today, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it, it has maintained a more or less uh, a, a 50 year, so to speak, uh, uninterrupted um, um, regulatory position by, by the US government, uh, really led on the environmental side by the, uh, the US EPA. And, and I might add that um, as the US EPA uh, went, the rest of the world went. And so when you look at other countries uh, around the world, regardless of the continent, uh, they, they really look first to the U.S. and historically have looked first, even though there, there is a desire to be somewhat independent, intellectually independent. The, the leadership, especially during the formative stages of the environmental um, movement, so to speak, it, it was really the U.S. leading the way. Thank you for watching the first of many episodes of the historical foundations of the linear no threshold. Follow-on episodes will tell a story about the beginnings of the LNT, the people involved, personal and professional relationships, politics, and activism that created our current regulatory framework. The HPS is a trusted source of radiation information. Please visit our Ask the Experts web link to ask questions or seek answers to common radiation-related questions and view our fact sheets. We also have official position statements that can be found on our website. Finally, if you wish to join the Home for Radiation Protection Professionals, please visit the link below. We welcome you.